can kind of get this thing into the screen, you know, because I again I can't find my um, wide angle lens, but yeah. You guys can see the car is super dirty. What we're about to do right now is wash it. This side actually isn't that dirty at all, but we're gonna wash it anyway. And yeah, I'm hoping the uh, ECU fixes the issue and then we could drive it because I really do want to drive this thing because I have like a lot of plans for uh, a lot of plans for it, but I have some plans for it. So, uh. Let's set up the power washer and uh, go from there. Yeah, so the red one for some reason isn't working, so I have to use my weak one. But, you know, it's better than nothing, I guess. I guess. I just don't really know how to use it, so I gotta learn. Yeah, like you guys can see how gross this whole thing is, hopefully. So, yeah, when it's done, it's going to be really nice looking. Like, all this dookie all over the car. But yeah, let's, let's continue. Soap started coming out now, which is good, but I just don't know how. Okay, so hopefully you guys can see it, but look at the difference on this. See how it kind of like beads off and then look at this one. How it kind of just like stays there. So quick and easy. So you. Yeah, and it also works best if this thing is dry, but yeah, so boom. Oops. And then, boom, look at that. And then for the most part, it just beads off. So yeah, the thing is, you just have to do it, you have to wipe, wipe it dry and do it, but as you guys can see, the water is more beading off than it was before. Beading off, not beating off. Boom, you see that? Beading right off. Okay, so to actually like wipe down the car and whatnot, I'm using the uh, Chemical Guys Hydro Speed Quick Ceramic Detailer mixed with the Meguiar Ceramic Detailer. These are both like after coats that you do on the car, but like when I'm doing like a just like wiping down the car and stuff, and I don't really have anything to scrub it with, I just spray the whole car down and wipe it. And then it cleans everything and then it also makes the car pretty um hydrophobic as well so once you keep using this over and over it creates like a coat over the car and once you actually get the coat over the car it makes it um hydrophobic so it's a lot easier to clean as time goes on and easier to detail as time goes on like when you just do like a quick spray down and dry off the car is like super clean a lot more than uncoated paint and it also gives it like a nice like kind of waxed finish as well so it's like it's a really good combination like i don't ever see anybody mix them but that's what i do because it makes it easier because 
these are two things like you do the you do one then the other but if you just spray them both at the same time it makes life so much easier then you see the difference right there as it gets into being super dirty so you just boom spray the mixture and then just boom go across boom get in all the little crevices boom just wipe it all Boom, and then bomb. Go over it again. And as you keep spraying, you'll see the things start to even bead on top of the paint now. Like, as you guys can see, it's like in beads. Before, it was just like streamed down. Oops. Yeah, and if you drop the rag on the floor, fold it, because you don't really want to add extra swirls to the paint. But granted, I don't care about this one, because this paint is absolutely nowhere near perfect, but you know, I don't want to be rubbing rocks on the car or anything. But yeah, like if you're super lazy and you just want to clean up the car a bit before a show or something, this is perfect. You see like the spray pattern right here, how it's kind of like just spreading out across the paint. I'll show you guys the difference between the things starting to activate in one second. All right, now watch. Boom, now it's starting to, see how it's starting to like more bead down instead of like spread across. that's showing you that this thing is creating like a layer of hydro hydrophobic coating and each time you do it it makes it just so much easier to clean as i was stating before i know there's a lot of debate on whether tire shine is good or not i've heard people say that it's dumb or something i don't know but i love tire shine like look at this and then I'm gonna spray it down, let it dry, and then I'll show you guys like the difference, like how different the thing looks with the tire shined and the tire ashy. Like you can basically have like a dirty car and shine the tires and the car will look clean, but you can have a super clean car and the tires are not shined and the car will just look dusty and ashy as hell. So, yeah. Boom, like, do y'all see this? The whole car looks different now. Like, it looks so nice and new, even though the thing looks shitty. It looks so much better without ashy ass tires. Like, look at that. And let me go to the good side. Like, oh my mama, this shit looks so much better. Like, look at this. Bruh. This looks like a nice car now. This looks like I could get in it and go, but I can't because it just doesn't run. But, yeah. I was just going to make this a wash video, but I'm going to actually make it a day in the life type vlog. So, I'm about to clean up out here. Then, I'm actually about to go cook. Um, yeah, so I'll not ramble right now. Clean up and go inside because I'm hungry. All right, so today we're making yakisoba. I always do two pots, so I start both pots with garlic butter. This pot is going to be first for the egg, and then for whichever meat you use, I'm going to be using um, <coughs> most likely a sashimi set with eel. And then this one is going to be for the yakisoba, if I didn't already mention that. Start this one with garlic butter, and then you put the soba noodles in. Then you add a little bit of water and lay it flat so it cooks evenly. And yeah, so I'll get into it in two seconds. All right, so boom, the yakisoba noodles are in. 
add a little water and you know one thing I don't do is measure anything I just know how things should be and I eyeball it if you can't do that I'm sorry this is not really too great of an instructional for you because once you just start putting things together you just know how much of what goes where and how and when and all that so boom put this flat turn it up a little bit and then grab a cover oh yeah and start seasoning your eggs and cook it low so you can season it and everything and scramble it in flick it over some yeah do that after you season your egg and you know scramble it in the pot lay it as flat as possible turn it up a little and then grab a lid boom and then you just let these things cook and then i'll get back to you guys in a second also life hack a good non-stick pot is a necessity like it just makes life so much easier like, look at that and then once the egg is basically fully fried you just slice it up into little pieces Then you put it in the yakisoba once you, you know, actually finish it. But since this thing cooked a little quicker than I expected, because usually I use three eggs, we got to finish the soba noodles. So I'll get to you guys in a second. Flavor and to spread the browning around, add a little bit of soy sauce, like just from a packet. You could also do like a capful if you have like the little container thingy of it. But yeah, this is for a little, a little bit for flavor, and then a little bit for making the noodles brown. And so you guys see, it's already starting to get like that brownish color. And then I'll show you guys in one second what I am trying to accentuate. Mm. So the powder from the yakisoba packet makes it a deeper brown color. So with the soy sauce, it makes it spread. A little easier and add some good flavor and coloring and that's exactly what you want because you want these noodles to be pretty brown because that means they're all equally coated and all are gonna have nice flavor and that's exactly what you want you don't ever want like pieces that are clumped up and have no flavor like that's weird Boom. So once that's done and you mix everything up, like, and you cut up the egg and everything like that, you put it in the yakisoba noodles. So you can eat it like this. It tastes so good. And especially like if it's breakfast time, it's super quick and easy. This can take like 10 minutes or less. You can eat it just like this. But now it's lunchtime, 2.30 basically. So I'm going to be adding some, you, you could do chicken, pork, fish octopus veggies whatever like you can literally put whatever in this if you want boom so you take a little bit of each out of a, an assorted sashimi set you cut it up and then you throw it in the pot to cook and then you make your sauce boom so now that it's basically minced <clears throat> lay the pot with garlic butter or oil however and then put it in the pot season it mix it around this you're seasoning it because well i season it because for what i'm making this is gonna be like it's gonna have like a sweet and spicy sauce so i don't want the fishy taste because that's not gonna complement this dish and granted i love sushi i love sushi and everything like that um like i'll eat sushi raw and everything but that is the taste like you eat like the raw fish and everything with the seaweed and the rice and everything. That is like a fishy dish. This is not. This is like a sweet and spicy with a little bit of salt. That's what the flavor of this one that I'm making is. You can literally do this however you want, but this is just how I do it. Boom. So this is the sauce that I make. Not telling anybody the ingredients in this or else I have to kill you. So, yeah, this is a 
like a sweet yet spicy sauce. It's very savory. Lots of different flavors. So it's just the type of thing that I like to do. I like lots of my foods you know, to have like a variety of flavors so it's not bland like every forkful, spoonful, chopstick full, every bite it just has to have like an explosion of flavor. It's supposed to be an event every time you eat my food. So, yeah, I saw it figure. Bam! God damn, Jermaine, yet again, you've outdone yourself with this exquisite cuisine.